Welcome back to the program. Africa's image to the international community is far from being at the best at a time like this. And really, who can we blame for this? Well, the world sees the continent only through a prism of war, disease, poverty, starvation, and corruption, which has a massive effect on many African youth. It appears that challenges stem from corruption to leaders who try to stay in power for life to bad governance, policy, economic hardship, but to mention just a few. The society we live in today calls for a shift from the way we do things to the way Africa is perceived by the international community. We want to get more on this how and how we can change the African narratives from the president of the African Public Relations Association, Mr. Yomi Badijo Kusoya. Thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Well, a lot has been on the front burner regarding Africa. We just looked at uh, the ongoing Africa Union Summit in Ethiopia, where the fight against corruption has been on the front burner. But tell us, why is the African continent bedeviled with several challenges that appear so difficult to tackle? Well, um, I think there are a myriad of problems. Um, I, 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 I think that the narrative about Africa is very poor. Um, it's in the negative, and you'll agree with me. And so you find out that um, it definitely will affect image. Uh, the reputation of Africa is very poor also. And some of them you've mentioned, some of the issues uh, concerning uh, governance, uh, poor infrastructure, uh, uh, um, uh, corruption. Uh, and I believe that also even the good things that are happening in Africa, uh, the stories are not being well told. So those have contributed to the kind of uh, poor image we have now. Well, talking about the poor image we have, we do have issues, yes, and we do have some Africans doing well, just as you mentioned, that there are good stories coming out of Africa, but they are not being well reported. How can we get the international community to have a different perspective, a positive perspective of Africa? You see, it's not going to happen by accident. It, has, it needs a strategic uh, and wholesome approach. Um, I, I, I'm very sad that uh, the 30th, summit of heads of state of the African Union just finished yesterday and perhaps one of the most uh, important things in Africa uh, was not discussed, it was not tabled uh, until we have a concerted approach to dealing with the issue of the image of Africa. We we'll still continue to beg the question. Um, only a few days ago we all were uh, uh, astounded by the question asked the uh, international author Chimamanda Adichie, I'm sure you know about that, where a French journalist in Paris asked her if we have uh, libraries in Nigeria. So these are the kind of uh, 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 impression or perception they have about Africa. It's not something we can work by accident. I believe alongside that we're talking about good governance, alongside that we're talking about uh, building the infrastructure, we must also have a wholesome strategic approach to uh, building the image of Africa. And this is why we at the African Public Relations Association, that we have taken it as a mandate that we must represent Africa. We must change that narrative. Um, who, who best to do it than we professionals in Africa? Um, so that, that is a mandate we have taken up for ourselves. You just mentioned now that the African Union Summit didn't mm. tackle some pertinent issues. Now, what are these issues that you think that were not discussed? Well, um, wholesomely, uh, a lot of the focus here was talk, we talked about the, uh, the heads of government talked about corruption, um, and that discussion was led by our own president. Um, we, a long time ago, we had what you call the, uh, I think it was a peer review, African peer review. And I don't know where that is. You know, we've got to, it's like building a house. So there's supposed to be blocks in that, you know, from the foundation to the lintel, to roofing, to decking, and so on and so forth. So some of the things that I think uh, we didn't talk about are those building blocks. Really, how do we get Africa, how do we get more finance into Africa? How do we create jobs? Um, we've got the teeming youth of Africa. What can we do with them? Uh, take for a few, take away a few of those heads of state. Most of them are old, and they're trying to uh, um, bring in solutions that, in my own uh, opinion, is like dealing with a digital problem, addressing a digital problem with an analog solution. Um, so we still have the issues in Africa. The environment is still not uh, thriving enough 
for the youth. They're the future. Um, I, I, I thought that focus should be on things like technology. Focus should be on things like inter-trade. If Africa could trade more within itself, we don't need the outside world or as much. If Nigeria could sell more of its oil to different parts of Africa, if we could refine petrol uh, or fuel from here and then export to other countries in Africa, we need more. The trade balance between uh, African countries need to be a lot healthier. So that's when I talk about the building blocks, the infrastructure. Why can I not um, get into a train? Uh, if I'm going to Nairobi, why do I have to fly? Um, we also have to talk about what we call the economies of scale, uh, how uh, Bene and Nigeria can come together and do things. So if you ask me, I think um, more of what we, the heads of state do, they do a show. And um, mm. there's really no measurement or evaluation. When you talked about the youth just now, yeah. do you think that the youth have a role to play in changing the perspective? Oh, definitely. I, I, I believe so, undoubtedly. I mean, that's where the entire world is going. Uh, we see the president of France. I mean, he's all of 40 or 41, and he, he got in when he was 39. Um, I think that if we don't begin to groom our youth, it's another sad story for Africa. Uh, and it's because the youth think that it's such a hopeless situation. That's why you find them trying to migrate to other countries and the issues you have in Mediterranean. If we feel that there's a lot for them to contribute here, that their, 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 their contribution will be appreciated, they wouldn't leave this country. But do you think that they're encouraged quickly, because we need to wrap this up now, but do you think that the youth are actually encouraged? Um, not enough. Not enough, not enough. I think, again, we've got to have a strategic youth engagement um, uh, approach to, the, to it all. And I think it must be taken from the African Union level. Well, many thanks for speaking with us, Mr. Yomi Badijo Kusoya, who's the president of the African Public Relations Association. It was good to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. Well, in other stories now, in East Africa, at least four people have been killed and about 6,000 people left homeless after a huge fire swept through an informal settlement in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Reports say fire engines arrived quickly on the scene, but did not have water to battle the flames on the settlement. Residents were reportedly forced to use sewage water to extinguish the fire. At least 6,000 people have been forced to take shelter at a school after homes and shops were destroyed. The cause of the fire is still unclear. And hours before a nomination deadline was set to make President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi the sole candidate, Egyptian politician Musa Mustafa Musa has indicated interest in competing in presidential elections. Several leading opposition figures called on Sunday for a boycott of the March election, citing a wave of repression that has cleared the field of challenges to Sisi and left his top opponent in jail. Former military commander Sisi was elected in 2014, a year after leading the army to oust Islamist President Mohamed Mursi. And South African band Ladysmith Black Mambazo, or Mambazo rather, has won the Best World Music Award at the 60th Grammy Award Ceremony in New York. The album that won the award is Shaka Zulu Revisited, 30th Anniversary Collection. It's a tribute to the founding members of the choral group, which has since been succeeded by younger members. It's a fifth award for the all-male group that has popularized the Zulu style of harmony-driven singing known as Istikhatamiya. The group has also received 19 Grammy nominations, an Academy Awards nomination, and an Amy Awards nomination. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I am Disney Adivaya.